I'd like to do another example of finding a confidence interval for a population proportion. And I suggest that we do the following. Here's the question. What proportion of the voting population would say that they did vote in the last election? There have actually been uh, psychological studies done on this. And they find that when people are asked if they vote, many people who did not vote say they did. Well, <clears throat> to answer this question, we need to go out and collect a sample. And after we get the sample, we'll calculate the, the confidence interval. And then we'll make a statement that is going to look just like this, with, with these blanks filled in. We are blank percent confident, some percent confident, that between some percent and another percent of the total voting population will say that they voted. All right. Please understand that this percent of our confidence is not something we're going to calculate. This is something we need to just decide what our level of confidence what is going to be. How important is it that we have a high level of confidence? So we'll, we'll figure this out in a second. And our other blanks here are going to determine what our confidence interval is. Our confidence interval will be from this percent to this percent. <clears throat> and this is the, always the type of statement we usually make. Now, here's the specific, and oh, by the way, uh, let's talk about the, the variables that we, that we use throughout here, too. When we talk about the proportion of the population, we use the letter P to represent that. So we're really trying to find out what P is. In this case, the proportion of voting population. <clears throat> so let's say you collected a sample and you, you questioned 1,002 eligible voters. Of those 1,002 eligible voters, it turns out that 705 of them said that they did vote in the last election. Okay? So we'll keep referring to 1,002 is the size of our sample, and 705 of those said they did vote. So we'll, we'll refer back to that. <clears throat> All right. It's basically a, in general, a two-step process to do these. Number one, we have to choose our confidence level. All right. 90%, uh, 95%, 98%, 99% and are typically the ones that are, that are used. Uh, what would be appropriate here? Well, it's whatever we decide. Um, and I've already decided that. I've decided we're, we want to be at the highest level of confidence. So we want to be at the 99% confidence level. So already I can go back, and here's our statement again. I can now fill in this part because we just decided that. We're going to be 99% confident in our answer. And again, what that means is if I go out over and over and over again and collect many different samples of this size, then 99 out of 100 samples would give me an, an, an answer, a confidence interval, that actually does contain the real answer, the real population proportion. <clears throat> All right. So step number one was easy. We just decided that ourselves. Step number two is it takes a little more work, but it's not that bad. We have to create the margin of error. The margin of error is going to lead us directly to the confidence interval. The margin of error represented by E is equal to the following little formula. It's equal to Z sub alpha over 2. And this all in itself is just a name for a what we call a critical value and please recall that these critical values come directly from which of these four confidence levels we chose. We we'll then take this critical uh, value, multiply it times the standard deviation that's defined for uh, a distribution of uh, sample proportions and it is simply just the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. Now let's go through these. 
z sub alpha over 2, because we chose 99%, that is going to be how many standard deviations we have to go out in either direction. And that number is set at 2.575. That's just what it is for 99%. Again, this is a, the critical value. T hat and Q hat and N are the three values that we get from the sample. We know that we had 1,002 voters and 705 of them said they did vote. So I simply need to find what is my sample proportion. And that's simply 705 divided by 1,002. My calculator says uh, 705 divided by 1,002 is approximately 0 0.70359. And we usually round that to three significant digits. So that would be 0 0.70. The 5 says round the 3 up to a 4. So we'll use that number. Okay. So we're approximately a little bit bigger than 70% of all the people in the, in the sample did say that they voted in the last election. Well, Q hat is simply all the other people, the, or the proportion to be technically correct. And so it is 1 minus the point seven zero four. 1 minus point seven zero four is... 0.296. All right. N is simply just the size of my sample overall. The sample size isn't 705. That's just the ones that said they did vote. The sample size is 1,002. All right. So we have the four values that we need to plug into this formula to find the margin of error. So the margin of error E is going to be equal to 2.575 times the square root of 0 0.704 times 0 0.296 divided by my sample size of 1,000. Oops, that should be a 2, 1,002. Okay, and let's see what that is. According to my calculator, 2.575 times the square root and the square root sign and 0 0.704 times 0 0.296 divided by 1002, close parentheses, equals, I get 0 0.037. Okay? What, what is this number? Well, this is a decimal number that we want to convert to a percent. So this is equivalent to about 3.7, by moving the decimal point two places, 3.7%. Our confidence interval is always built on p hat, starting with p hat, which is called the point estimate, the information we're going to use. P hat, going to go from P hat minus this percent to P hat plus this percent. Well, as a percent, we said this was about 70.4%. So this is going to be 70.4% plus 3.7%, or minus, in this case we're minus on this side, to 70.4% plus 3.7%. And what is that? That's about 70. I'm still trying to add that, aren't I? Let me just use my calculator here. That is 70.4 minus 3.7, which gives me 66.7% to here, it's 74.1%. Here is my confidence interval from 66.7% to 74.1%. So we can now 
finally fill in our statement with these numbers, we are 99% confident that between 66.7% and 74.1% of the voting population will say that they voted in the last election.